Hey guys, it's Ron. So I wanted to put a quick lab together uh, just to kind of show you that there's more than one way to solve a problem. Uh, and in this scenario, I've got uh, my core or my headquarters network and we've expanded out into remote sites. Uh, those remote sites need to be able to access our internal uh, web, or not web, but uh, mail server, okay? So in order to do that, first they have to be able to access the outside world because we're all going through our ISPs. So to do that, basically I've applied NAT. Uh, if I bring this up, just kind of show you, I've already got it configured here. Uh, I've got my VLAN 10, so these are my users down here. So VLAN 10 addresses are the 192.168.2.1 uh, or 2.0 network. And so I've added this access list of 192.168.2.0.0.0.255. All right, so that basically snags up those users. And then I apply it in NAT. So IP NAT inside source list one, so that's the access list one. I'm using the interface FA00 and overloading. Okay, so basically all of my users will share that outside IP address that's assigned to fast ether 00. So I've got IP NAT inside for my VLAN, and I've got uh, IP NAT outside uh, for my Fast Ether 00. Now Fast Ether 00 gets a DHCP assignment from my ISP. Okay, so that's what's happening for this VLAN, that VLAN, this VLAN. Uh, on my core network, I made sure... Let's do a show access list. In Access List 1, I just also added 172.16 uh, network, which is for my servers up here. Okay, So that makes sure that everybody can access the outside world. And we can, we can verify that if I, if I bring up one of my uh, computers. I'll do a ping 8.8. Or I basically set up a, a DNS server out here. So it takes Packet Tracer a little while to uh, be able to resolve anything. But uh, eventually, once it does, I should be able to ping through. Uh, and I'll show you, we'll bring up simulator mode. We'll show you that NAT is being applied. So come on, hurry up. All right, so there it goes. So there it's working just fine. So we can verify that... Uh, it is, in fact, applying NAT. Bring that back up. It's going to go ahead and send an ICMP because we've already done DNS. We just did that in the last step. Go ahead and speed it. Bring the speed up a little bit. Okay, so once it hits my router, if we look inbound, uh, I'm using IP 192.168.2.2. Outbound, 10.0.0.10. So I know NAT's being applied, and I can watch it go go throughout the network. But I I know this is going to work. the The issue now is so we can access the outside network, but what about accessing inside of the network? I want to be able to make sure that I can hit the web server. So if I reset simulation, I'm going to exit simulator mode. I'll bring up my email client. I'm going to go ahead and try to compose an email. I'm going to send it to remote1 at bc.ddns. That's what I called her. I'll just go ahead and send a test message. All right. Connection received a reset from server. So that's, that's a little weird. So that's not working. Let's try to figure out why. So if I uh, bring up in simulator mode again, I go ahead and try the same thing, test. I'm going to go ahead and resolve the name mail.bc.ddns. So I'm going to send a DNS entry. Capture, capture, capture. All right, so the DNS server uh, got the request. It went ahead and fulfilled the request. It says 10.0.0.2, which is up here. This is going to go all the way back. And I'm going to generate some traffic to send to the server. Okay, so if we look uh, on the server, 
I'm using a destination port 25. And if you look up your TSC or TCP port numbers, you'll notice TC or port 25 is uh, SMTP. So this is for sending mail. Now it's going all the way. Everything looks good so far, but something happened there. We never ended up sending it on. So if I look here, show IP NAT translation, there's no translations, okay? And that's because the only NAT that's happening is basically coming from this side out. So let me bring it out of simulator mode. Connection didn't work to make sure that NAT's actually working on this side. Ping 8, that 8, that 8, that 8. And we can ping through. So now when I do a uh, show IP NAT translation. So we have translation happening, uh, but it's basically allowing us to go outside, but nothing specific for inside. Like this router, once it hit, uh, once it got the packet for uh, port 25, it, it had no clue where to send it to because th that doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't have a translation for that. So we need to, we need to add that. So we'll do a uh, config T IP NAT uh, inside source. We'll do a static entry TCP because we want uh, to be able to specify a very specific port. 172.16.0.2. So this is our inside local IP. This is our uh, email server. And then which port? So we just uh, had a problem with uh, getting tw port 25 through. 10.0.0.2 is our outside address. And also port 25. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and map port 25 on the outside to port 25 on the inside for our web server or for our email server. Uh, and because I also know that uh, uh, when you request email, it uses a different port number. So uh, in Packet Tracer here, we use POP3. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that back up. And the POP3 uh, port number is 110. Okay. And then I'll, for just for good measure, I know I've got DNS set up on that server as well. So I'll do 53. And let's try it again. So now, let's go ahead and try to send. Okay, send success. So that looked good. So let's bring up this guy. So this is our remote one email. I'm going to go ahead and try to receive. It's going to go ahead and attempt to resolve uh, DNS. And I think Packet Tracer is being retarded. I'm going to cancel, receive, cancel. I'm going to go ahead and ping mail.bc.ddns. Come on. Some days I hate Packet Tracer. There's no reason why this should be. There it goes. It just took a lifetime. So now if we come back up, receive, it resolved it, and bam, we got our email. All right. So now we're working. We had NAT to get us out, but then we had to add static NAT uh, on our core here to get it back to our DNS or our uh, email server. Okay, so that's one way in which we can do it. But let's say we had multiple services on inside here that we wanted to access. We'd have to add static uh, entries for every one of those ports, and it, it can get pretty ugly. Uh, not to mention the fact that now uh, port 25 is mapped into our network which could present, you know, some vulnerability. So in the next video, we'll explore another idea to do it without having to add those uh, static nets. Uh, thanks for watching.